Hello, I'm Mark Evans with another More Minute. And we have a special minute today because we're going to be visiting with our friend Paul Dunn. Paul, of course, is well known as a local author, a columnist, uh, came from a background in advertising and has had a very interesting life. And he also was the historian for uh, the Pinehurst Country Club. Uh, he is a historian as well in the field of golf. And some years ago, Paul and his late wife, B.J. Dunn, uh, appeared on Mark My Words to talk about a wonderful book they'd written about the golf courses of Donald Ross. That book has now come out in a brand new second edition. It is quite extraordinary. And Paul, welcome. It's nice to have you here for a more minute to talk about your book. And tell us, first of all, what set Donald Ross apart? The name of this book is Great Donald Ross Golf Courses Everyone Can Play. Well, if you think of Henry Ford as being the guy connected with cars, or Alexander Bell telephones, uh, Donald Ross can be thought of that way in terms of golf. I mean, he came here, a young man, uh, had about $30 in his pocket, maybe. Um, he uh, ultimately designed um, about 400 golf courses, which is remarkable when you think about it. Um, he is the premier pioneer um, man of golf in the United States. And of course, Piner, where we live, is where he spent most of his professional life. So the story of Pinehurst is deeply entwined with the, with the life of Donald uh, J. Ross. Yes. And uh, what's very interesting is how you and B.J. did this, because you worked many years and you not only researched this, but you went to a lot of these golf courses and actually played the courses. Yeah, um, we we just I, I had never heard of Donald Ross when I came here. Um, came down here, um, was interested in uh, local community affairs, and one evening I was setting up a banquet at the uh, Pinecrest Inn, which had been owned by Donald Ross, and I had about. 400 people show up for this banquet where we should have had maybe 100. And I realized there was a lot of local interest in Ross. And uh, from there, I said to myself, I wonder if people would like to know where the Ross courses are. Because down here, everybody's a golfer. And when I asked people, I said, well, do you know where the Ross courses are? They all said, no, I have no idea where they are. So I thought, well, maybe I could do a book about this. Um, 20 years later, I'm still working on Ross. Uh, Ross um, was remarkable in that um, he uh, had professional engineers, three of them in different parts of the country. Uh, they, in those days, there were no airplanes to fly around, so he would have these men visit properties, lay out a, a design of the land, and he would design a course for that land and they would then actually supervise the construction and building of these courses. It was, the logistics were unbelievable. And in some cases, because they had trains in those days, of course, he would visit the courses. But I would say that he probably only visited maybe 30% of the courses that he actually built. Yeah, it's remarkable. Yeah. That's, that's quite, quite remarkable. Uh, you also, of course, talked about uh, some other very important elements of this, the Tufts archives you mentioned here, and you talk about Francis we met, who was a famous amateur golfer and a close friend of Ross. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Ross had friends who were the prominent golfers of the day. When he would open a golf course, these men would come and be invited to attend the opening of these courses and put on demonstrations. In those days, there were no million dollar purses. Um, Professional golfers weren't even allowed in the front door of a private club. I mean, they were like the help. <laughs> they were not treated nicely. And uh, Ross would have these men show up. He had one man who showed up as a trick golf artist. And uh, they would pass the hat. And here was this, he was the number one golfer in Australia, a very famous man. And here they were passing the hat, and they would take in, let's say, $200. And he thought, boy, this is tremendous. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> it was, uh, being a golfer in those days was very difficult financially. Yeah. The world has indeed changed. Now, what have you done with this second edition to, to change things? Well, to begin with, 
I had to research, well, we started out researching about 350 courses, which meant I had to contact them and get all kinds of information to determine whether they would qualify for this book. To be in this book, you had to be open to public play, meaning that if you were a very famous private golf course, we wouldn't put it in the book. We would only put in the book a course that you or you or anyone could come and play. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, so that was the first criteria. Uh, then it was a matter of actually contacting these courses and writing the history of each one. And unfortunately, almost every golf course in the United States has no historian. So no one keeps the history. Even Pinehurst today has no historian. It's quite remarkable. And a historian is very important. What Pinehurst does have, though, is the Tufts archives. The Tufts archives uh, capture not only the history of Donald Ross and Pinehurst golf history, but it's a national resource and it's highly treasured. Uh, it's where every publisher goes, every golf magazine there goes if he wants some information. It's there. It's quite a remarkable. And they have about 200 actual restored sets of the architectural drawings of, of about half of the Ross courses, and they're priceless. Yeah. Well, this is a very special book. I might add the, the illustrations, the pictures, the photographs are just stunning. It's uh, full of golf history and anecdotes. And uh, it is, of course, a book about great Donald Ross golf courses everyone can play. Paul was kind enough to point to me, including me and everyone. Uh, I don't think they'd want me out on the golf course. I would be considered to be a hazard. Uh, but I may be the only non-golfer in Moore County, North Carolina, but there are lots of other golfers here who would be fascinated by this. So thank you so much, Paul Dunn. And this is a wonderful book, and it's available, of course, at your favorite bookstore and also available online, uh, all of the usual suspects, Amazon and others. And uh, do pick up a copy of great Donald Ross golf courses everyone can play. And uh, when you're doing this, also don't forget to mark my words. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it.